to Good Libations, which is our show about mixology. I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist bartender. I know mixologist at times sounds like a little bit of a pretentious term, but I think it better defines exactly what I do. And we're going to do some adventures into different drinks today that have made a resurgence. The first drink that I'm going to make is based on brandy. And drinks that involve brandy for a very long time were neglected. In fact, apart from the Alexander and coffee drinks like Kiyoki coffee that use brandy, there was virtually nothing that used brandy. And of course, brandy is distilled from grapes. It's a uh, distilled spirit. And cognac, of course, is light years beyond brandy. It's uh, much more fancy and much more upscale. And if you have deep pockets and you want to show off, you could use cognac, but it's really not necessary. Better to just use brandy if you're going to make a mixed drink. And this first drink that we're going to make was actually created in New Orleans at an establishment on Grevier Street. So I simply call it the Grevier. And again, you don't have to buy expensive brandy either. Just get a reasonably priced brand and mix the drink based on that. But again, mixed drinks and cocktails based on brandy are undergoing a resurgence. And this is the sort of drink where if you wish, you could put some simple syrup in it, but I choose not to do so because I feel that the ingredients that it incorporates are sweet enough in addition to the brandy because you don't want to produce a cloying, sickeningly sweet drink. That doesn't suit my, my palate. And I think people who are seriously into cocktails don't appreciate cloyingly sweet drinks any more than a wine aficionado likes sweet wines except perhaps as a dessert item. You want something that's more complex and drier and the same principle with cocktails. And even though this drink utilizes an old-fashioned glass, um, I don't pour it simply in the glass and mix it in there and stir it. I do what I usually do. I use the cocktail shaker as a medium for mixing up the drink and then I divest it, ice and all, into the glass. So we're going to set about making this drink, the Grevier, and I think that you'll appreciate it. And to be nice, I'll do some measuring instead of free pouring because I keep getting requests. You know, it's nice that you free pour, that you're able to do that, but we really cannot judge how much you're putting in. So I'll be kind and I'll measure the ingredients to a certain degree using the top of the cocktail shaker as the medium. So what we're going to do first is put a bit of ice in the shaker. Get that going. And again, make sure that your ice is stored so that it doesn't melt and become dilute. And there's many things you can do. If you have a bar ice maker, that's very nice. But that's a rather expensive gadget. So most of us don't have access to that. But at the very, very least, use an ice chest that will keep the ice from melting. Because if the ice melts, you're going to get a dilute drink and it's going to compromise the quality of it. And the last show that I did talked about nitrogen infused drinks, which avoids the issue of dilution completely because the nitrogen super cools the drink. So it melts gradually, but there is no dilution of the alcohol or the ingredients at all, which is an advantage. But few of us are going to spend money on getting liquid nitrogen and the doer containers that are required to store it in. But anyway, we're going to set about making this drink. And first of all, we're going to put the brandy in. And again, this is a very modest, cheap, actually, um, brand of brandy, but it's perfectly legitimate and perfectly usable. And we're going to put in about the equivalent of your typical um, measure, we'll put it that way, of uh, liquor. And then the other alcohol that is put in this drink is either triple sec or orange curacao. And triple sec or um, 
Cointreau is preferable because orange curacao is quite sweet and it has a hint of bitterness too because of the oranges that are used to produce it. So we're going to put a bit, about half of the brandy into the shaker over the ice. And then the next ingredient that we're going to use in this drink is going to be fresh orange. And as I always mention, be sure that you hand squeeze your fruit. Because if you hand squeeze it, you're going to get the infusion of the peel. And that adds complexity and oils into the drink. So we're going to, at the very least, quarter this orange, perhaps to make it more uh, accessible to squeeze. I'm going to actually go beyond that and put it into eighths. So we're going to go ahead and squeeze the orange in the drink. Get that in. And then after that, we're going to put lemon in the drink, fresh lemon. And same thing, we're going to cut the lemon, and we're going to use about a half of it, and we're going to hand squeeze it into the drink because we want that infusion of the oil. And then, interestingly, we're going to put some maraschino cherry juice. Now, you could use maraschino liqueur, but that is going to, again, make the drink, in my opinion, way too sweet. The maraschino juice with the maraschino cherries is sufficient. That should do the job. And then we're going to add a little bit of sweet vermouth. So you see what I mean? There's plenty of sweet ingredients in here that you really do not need to use simple syrup. And to accomplish this, we're just going to pour a bit more than a teaspoon in there. And now we're going to shake this brandy-based drink up. And as I mentioned, we're going to divest the whole thing in the old-fashioned glass. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And to me, this is a lot easier than stirring all the ingredients. There's more uniformity when you do this, and I think it's better. So hopefully I won't spill it all over the place. We shall see, because uh, clumsy, I am a bit clumsy. So. There we go, and it's a drink that has a rather attractive appearance, too. It has a nice pinkish hue to it. And for a garnish, we're going to put a maraschino cherry in it. And we're going to put a bit of lemon, where we will squeeze it in, and then leave it as a garnish. And I'm going to, of course, taste the drink. What's the point of making it and not doing quality control and tasting it? So I'm going to do that now to make sure it is in the proper proportions as it should be. And oh yes, that is quite nice. That is a genuinely nice, well-balanced, rather unique cocktail. And again, we're using brandy, which is a much neglected spirit until recent times because before there were not very many creative drinks that incorporated brandy. But now, bartenders and mixologists are getting, getting more adventurous and trying out new things that marry well with brandy. And adding the sweet vermouth to it adds a different dimension to it that I think is superior. So always keep that in mind. Don't skip ingredients and don't think that you can use substitutes either. Don't try dry vermouth. That'll ruin the drink. And again, it's not necessary to use cognac unless you have deep pockets and want to show off. And frankly, if you have the sort of friends where you have to show off your financial success, better find a different set of friends. So again, I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist. And as I always emphasize at the end of every show, drink responsibly and be very careful. We want to keep our community safe and well spoken of. And driving when we're intoxicated is not the way to do it. And it's not a compliment to the mixologist either. So thank you again for tuning in to an episode of Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews, 
and you'll we'll look forward to more shows. Thank you.